What you working on, Dan? Hello. So, this is the deal. I have always loved to ski since I was a little kid. And my main fear now, skiing, besides falling off a cliff, is that my legs will fall off on the ski lift. So what I'm thinking of is modifying a ski boot. And the ski boots go in here, they pop in right here, and it snaps down like that to, you know, to do the ski. But the ski boot is pretty heavy. So it's, it's as heavy as kind of a regular outdoor heavy boot. Uh, but fortunately, I have an old pair of legs. So I'm gonna take these legs and I'm gonna cut this foot off, or not the foot, the, the foot shell, and I'm gonna adapt this boot, basically cut the boot up so that I can epoxy the foot with its carbon fiber center into the boot. And then I will have a much lighter ski boot. So I already tested the socket and these still fit me so I can use them pretty safely. And so the next, first step is um, I'm gonna take the foot shells off and then I'm going to do here. This is a rear entry boot, right? So the, the back comes off. So I'm gonna drill out the pivot hinges right here and here. Mm -hmm. And so the back should come out. I'll take out the liner. And then I'm gonna cut, first I'm gonna cut along this line. I'm gonna cut along this line in order to make it a, a shorter boot. And then see what I've got left, right? See what is in there, see what I need to epoxy, and then adjust where the, the boot is gonna go. So I've gotta drill those out as my first step. So I'll move the ski out of the way. Oh, and I got these skis off of Craigslist. There was a guy on there that has a whole garage full in South Minneapolis of skis that he buys out in Colorado, brings them here, and then sells them to people here. And then sometimes he buys them back after the kids have gone through one season, he refinishes them, refixes them. But he had a pair of boots that had a broken uh, bracket or a broken latch that he gave me and then sold me these skis, which honestly I've never had my own skis, so it's kind of fun, for a hundred bucks. So, pretty good deal. This should be just a rivet. It should come right up. Can you tell me a little bit about your workshop down here? Um, no. Why not? Uh, because I'm looking for tools. Okay. Which is probably the main <laughs> thing you need to know about my workshop, which is I can never find any tools that I have. And then he sends me down here. He's like, go down to the workshop and get blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no. I've learned to just say no because I can't find anything. And yes, I know these are line lens pliers. Pulling out a little heavier duty. Yeah, a disc grinder. A disc wow. grinder. Oh, interesting. stinky. It's kind of smoking. Mm -hmm. well, two
Ooh, that worked. Got it off. Nice. So that's the heel. This is the inner liner. In theory, this should come out easy. <laughs> there we go. Nice, Stan. All right, now okay, zoom in on the inside. Yeah. Nice. Most of the rest of that's going away too. But. Okay. So the two pivot pivot rivets, right? Cut those off on the outside. Mangled that up, but doesn't matter because it's all going mostly going away. Um, so then I've got the inside boot. This is the inside boot liner, which I won't need. This is the heel that came off the pivot. It was just attached by those two rivets. Okay. And then, so I'm going into the boot, going in there, and I'm going to get most of this structure off. And then I'll have my core boot that is what I'll attach the, the fake leg to. So, I mean, roughly the leg will go in here be epoxied down and go from there. So question, why cut the rest of it off? Why not explain why you want to cut the rest of it off instead of just epoxying the, the leg into the way it is now? Wait. Wait. I just okay. want it lighter, lighter. Okay. So. And why is that? Because I don't like the, when the legs fall off on the chairlift. Oh, there you go. Okay. Like, like they haven't. <laughs> But it's really not fun to be up 30 feet in the air True. and trying to hold your leg on with your hand through the snow pants. Just okay, fun. okay. How do you tell the story about when your leg broke when you were skiing? Like, was that in college? Is this story time with Dan? Yes, story time with Dan. Tell the story. It's great. Um, the current legs that I have here, let me show you the current leg. The current legs I have have carbon fiber and metal, I don't know what metal is at this point anymore, chrome steel or whatever, that has a, a stock and then it has a socket. Mm -hmm. My old legs, when I was in high school and college and even as a little kid, had a socket like this and then it had like a foam, spray foam cover like these, like on this one, right? It would have a, a, a cover, foam inside, and then they would put fiberglass around the outside. So it was a thin layer of material that held the whole leg together and the old legs would bolt on so basically look at the foot shell here mm -hmm. the old legs would have a separate foot that would bolt through the bottom okay into the leg okay right and there'd be a block of balsa wood right here inside the leg okay that it would bolt into had a little fixture one time when i was skiing over at welch village or whatever um i turned in the snow and picked my foot up to turn and it tore off the leg right here, right above the wood block. <laughs> so I was standing there and so my ski was still on the boot, or skis and boot were still together. And there was just a little thread of stuff that I cut out with a pocket knife. And so I just had the boot and the top of my leg in there. And <laughs> and you guys they, called ski patrol that someone had a broken leg. Yeah, I got, I, yeah, I got the, I got on the back of the snowmobile and we drove to the lodge and I'm waiting there for my friend to turn in her equipment. And we were going to drive we drive us back home. We were obviously done skiing. And, of course, I hoped that I would get attention, right? I was, <laughs> hey, look, my leg fell out. Yeah. And so I'm sitting there with the boot at my feet, separated in just this little stump, and realized that the first aid station at a ski resort is not the place where anyone wants to pay any attention to you because they've all actually hurt real things, right? Right, so, right. Yeah, that wasn't... So you didn't get hurt, even though your leg broke. Yeah, no pain at all. Okay. Yeah, obviously, it just, it just tore off and then um, drove me back to my car. And um, I had a clutch, and so it was my left leg. And oh, so no. I had to scooch all the way, my seat all the way forward and use my clutch with just the stump of the leg. <laughs> and so I'm like up against the steering wheel, little Datsun V210 or something. You know, clutch, driving home. It worked fine. That's it was funny. Just funny. And then they just repaired the leg. It was no okay. big deal. Okay. So. But yeah, the new legs are much stronger. So hopefully these will... And underneath this cover is the same leg as the one that's up that I'm wearing now, basically. It's just... This is just an old one. So. Yeah. A few years back, I asked him, like, can you stop wearing those goofy covers? And so the last pair of legs you had made, they didn't put the cover on, which... Which... Uh... I like better. Is Athena outside the door? I think she is. Should I go get her? She won't want to see it. That's okay. Well, she's crying. She's crying. Where's
Here's Athena. Hi. Do you want to come see what's going on? It's chilly in here, babe. Hi. Hi. Do you want to be in here with oh, us? No, okay. Go check things out. Lots of things to smell, Athena. Yeah, sweet babe. Hey, Dan. My feet are cold. Hey, Ingrid. <laughs> I love saying things like that to him. Like, my feet are cold. My toes hurt. I stubbed my toe. I broke my toe. Whatever. He's like, well, at least you have feet. So. Lots of fake leg jokes in our house. Right, Dan? Uh-huh. We have lots of stories about when the boys were little. So we'll have to share those sometime. Those are fun. They always loved uh, playing with uh, daddy's fake legs. So what's the plan now? What you doing? Cutting this with the bandsaw. Okay. First we're finding out why it's One of the reasons why we bought this house was it has this second lower garage, which Dan wanted to have a big workshop and space for for stuff. So we have a four-wheeler, even though we live in the suburbs. Um, we have a crazy driveway, so it helps plow the driveway. And then we have a really fun old Jeep, which we'll have to do a video on the Jeep. How's that sound, Dan? 1980 CJ5? Yes, I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> that was the best choice. Now, your job, Ingrid? Yes. You're gonna drill holes in this so it looks like a crock. No, I'm not gonna. <laughs> no, I think that's what you need to. Oh, I... okay, so it's it's now. It does now look it's like a, a crock. Bowl, right? Yeah. So, this is how they invented crocks, I think. You think? Yeah, break okay. crock. So now you're gonna do the other one? Yep.
Number two. Yay. Back to the bandsaw. We're off. Hold on a second. Okay, say that again. I think I'm going to keep them as croc looking. Crocs. Yeah, because... They look funny. They do look funny. And if you did the holes in them, that'd be even funnier, actually. Yeah, I don't really want s snow to get in them. Well, that's well, true. <laughs> do you think snow would pack down in there then? Would that be a problem? Well, um, it won't. snow packing in here won't really be a problem. It'll just drop me a little bit of extra weight. Um, but there's nothing that's going to be movable in here, so it's not going to. And I'm not taking the foot back out of the, the shell. Okay. I'm just going to glue them in permanently, basically. Okay, that's true. So it's not a big deal. Um, it's just getting the snow out when you're done. Well, yeah, I mean, it'll just melt out eventually. It's no big deal. Um, it's kind of yeah. like your water. He's got a pair of legs that he wears in the water, and when he gets out, you have to dump them up and dump them upside down and drain out all the water mm -hmm. that collects in the foot. So, similar. Yeah. Okay. All right, what's next? I gotta get these foot shells off. Okay. And believe it or not, these are probably gonna be harder than the skis things. Why do you have to get the foot off? Why can't you just epoxy the foot? Because the foot won't stick as well to epoxy. Okay, okay, that makes um, sense. And then the, the fake, the carbon fiber can actually come out of it. Oh, okay, that's so, true, that's true. How do you, yeah, what are you gonna do? Just cut it with a... I think I'll cut it, but again, this is really tough material. You're supposed to be able to pry these off. They pry on and off, uh -huh. but they've got a little catch in the back of the foot that makes it really hard to get back off. Like, okay. And so I haven't... Taken them off in a while? Well, I, I never take them off. It's usually, it's always the, the guys at the prosthetics place oh. at Winkley. So. You could run in there and just have them pop up to <laughs> tell them what you're up to. And that's probably they'd true. They'd probably think it was funny. That's probably true. Do you think that's a wise idea? No. No, because you just want to keep working. Right? Right. Thank you for joining us for part one of the ski leg build. Click like and subscribe to come back and find out how it turned out.